I opened an incognito tab. This is his tweet about this video that we're watching. Mm -hmm. uh, the new alt-right playbook. When the right can't attack white liberals directly, <laughs> they often attack people of color as a proxy and white liberals, or he just says, and liberals often let them. This technique is rooted in American white supremacy and is the base from which fascists build power. Listen, I'm not letting conservatives attack any black people. Like, <laughs> if you're a conservative and you want to come to our channel and attack black people, just fuck off already, okay? <laughs> Seriously, fuck off. Like, I, I'm, I mean, it's well known on the channel. I don't like racial stereotypes. This is why I don't like CRT, because it's all about... You know, there was a time when we had a lot of problems with black, negative black stereotypes, negative stereotypes about black people, negative stereotypes about homosexuals, all, all kinds of people. We still have, you know, negative stereotypes about, you know, some people. Mm -hmm. But whites is the new, like, let's create this negative stereotype about white people that they're all innately racist. <laughs> that's some bullshit. That's some heavy bullshit. But for it's some reason, good. that's okay. But Ian Danskin can make a video. Like, Ian Danskin is not going to attack the root, the negative stereotypes. He's like, oh, I love stereotypes. Let me create some negative stereotypes about conservatives. They're all fascists. It's like, fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> Why? Why can't? I just, I don't understand it. The, the root of racism is, is generalizations, right? Of you know, saying because somebody has some superficial characteristic, they're lumped into a group that all have this superficial characteristic, right? That's right. bad thinking. It's it's bad thinking one on one. It's the root of racism. It's the root of all bigotry. All bigotry. Mm -hmm. Yet for some reason, it's totally fine for Ian Danskin to do that about conservatives, about white liberals. <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> Please stop, Ian. Stop being a big fat bigot. Mm hmm. Please, Ian. Yeah. Get out. Leave the dark side. Okay. Got to look at people like individuals. It's the only way we, it's the only hope we have of fighting the big bigoted world out there. Of color is still racism, but it's racism of a kind most white people have trouble recognizing. I can't see the racism. Oh, no. Or to speak with a sharper edge, that white people often refuse to acknowledge? From the white provocateur who does not hate minorities directly, but is willing to utilize the hatred of others to get what he wants from some white people, who says, I will hurt them a lot just to hurt you a little? To what? the white liberal who does mental gymnastics to not come out and say, That is a black and brown sacrifice I'm willing to make? Racism is. Please provide me. One single example of what the fuck you're talking about that this there is ever no occurs. Example. Where? Is, Where does this no ever example. occur? Yeah. The only example, he created a hypothetical example revolving around Miley Yiannopoulos that didn't even happen because he was canceled from speaking, disproving his own fucking point. Right. When, when the, when the quote unquote reliable sources made the claim to the UC Berkeley, which is what run by a bunch of white liberals, that Milo Yiannopoulos was going to supposedly dox a bunch of undocumented students that were living on campus. Mm -hmm. Which I don't even know how the fuck you get into a college if you're undocumented, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> um, but so so based on this claim alone, the co the college canceled his didn't allow right. him to speak there. Okay. Right. So the example that he's using literally disproves his own point. Yeah, they told the college said, no way, Jose, you're yeah. out of here. Just, all, all based on a fucking rumor. Based on a rumor they canceled him of this. Right. Ian, you are a liar and you yeah. are insane. Yes. It's not always a passion, but it is tolerable, usable. Wait, black and brown sacrifice I'm willing to make? Racism is not always a passion, but it is tolerable. He, he's basically saying white liberals don't call out racism by conservatives. I, I see what? the problem more what? like... Well, no, the... 
the socialists, uh, Antifa, what? these insane woke progressives, they see racism everywhere. So yes, white liberals are not calling the things that you are seeing as racism, racism, because they literally are not racism. It's like yeah, but, some well, other thing going on. That's sort that that does happen. But the op the exact opposite happens too. Like the number one weapon that is being used by the left right now, like the entire left, regardless of whether they're liberal or socialist, is to hit someone on the right with the racist stick. Right. That's like the number one tool. Yes. That was fucking like Joe Biden repeated the fine people hoax like just like a couple weeks ago or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No. What the f what world does he live in? What is he talking about? So I'm saying he lives in a fucking rock. He just stares at walls all day, masturbating as he vigorously as he <laughs> thinks about how there's Nazis somewhere, you know, raping him in the butt. I don't know what he's masturbating. It doesn't even make any sense. It's like insane. What he just everything he's saying is is inverted reality. I know. I was <laughs> I was thinking the same thing when I was I think, watching this I think, video see, yesterday. See, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna revise here. I assumed that Ian Danskin uh, hides in the closet, masturbating vigorously uh, to his girlfriend getting railed by a person of color. Right. But I actually think what's happening. It's a white liberal railing his girlfriend. No, he, he's masturbating vigorously to a to a person of color who he's dressed up as a Klansman. <laughs> Oh, no. Ian has the, the, the well of Ian's uh, problems just go so deep that it's right. just the, unta the untangle that web is something that mere mortal minds can't comprehend. He basically only gets off at, at contradictory characters, right? You know, the black Klansman. Yes. Well, no, see, he, no, no, no. So Ian's thinking is he actually, Ian gets off on the fact that there are all these alt right or white nationalists running around, you know, doing all these terrible things. Like he gets off to that. Yeah. But he doesn't, but because of his own uh, simpness and sense of his own guilt, he couldn't actually have a white nationalist have sex with his girlfriend. So he has to convince a black guy <laughs> to dress up like a white nationalist oh. to have sex with his girlfriend Oof, to fulfill his sick, twisted, degenerate fantasies. That's weird. That's weird. You gotta Look, get Ian, yourself I can just into... make up a bunch of shit too. Look at that. You gotta get yourself into some therapy and seriously. So someone can help you work through these issues. I know. Ian. Come on. Talk to us. Listen, we'll put you on the couch. We'll get to the bottom of this. Big Joel talked to us. I mean, come on. Well, I didn't accuse Big Joel of masturbating while watching his girlfriend getting fucked by another man. But... <laughs> That's true. I think this bridge is burned. <laughs> Usable. Easy to disregard. In a white supremacist world... It is the cost of doing business. That's right. And as someone in the chat says, the moment that the, the black guy dressed up as a white nationalist is about to, you know, orgasm, mm -hmm. he screams, this is MAGA country. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what really gets Ian going. Okay, that's what really gets him, you know, gets his rocks off. I can just picture Ian being all pissed off. You didn't say the MAGA country bit. What? <laughs> I told you specifically. How dare you? Oh, dear. How am I you supposed... say this is back in country? Get out! Get out! He starts crying. <laughs> exactly. Get out! Oh, my God. It's all ruined. <laughs> like, oh, my God. That's crazy. Business. Hold on. What The cost of doing business is black and brown people getting hurt in the back and forth about not calling out racism. Yeah, the, the the proxy battle of white liberals versus white right. conservatives. Right. Yeah. The black and brown people are just they're being they're being destroyed in this battle. They're the cannon right. fodder of this battle and nobody cares. Right. Which he hasn't conceptually he hasn't even explained what the, what that even how that's even possible, what that even means, but I don't know, maybe he'll get into it. I I'm curious where Ian lives because, you know, I live Isn't in Los, like Portland or something. Well, I live in Los Angeles. It's like I see black and brown people all the time. It's like mm -hmm. they're fully fully integrated into society. Okay, we see them at the grocery store and the shopping mall, and it's just like nobody in Los Angeles even really thinks about that kind of stuff. Of course, Ian is a part of Nebula. 
Oh, yeah. Okay, here's his bio on his website. He is a New England, so it's not Portland. He's a New England media artist mm-hmm. and video essayist. Um, he's, he spent several years at the California College of Arts. Wow. God, Adam. I just, I, I can't imagine living in a world where, you know, I'm at the bowling alley and there's a black couple bowling next to us and I'm thinking, oh, these people are oppressed by society. <laughs> They're fucking bowling with us. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but did you see what their score was? Are you doing better than them? They, That's oppression if you they are. Actually, we're doing much better than we were. I was like, damn. <laughs> it's just like our bowling alley is the United Colors of Benedict. I just, it's there hard for go. me to imagine. I mean, Adam, I just, if you think about it, okay. Well, bowling no, is a game where you throw a black ball at a bunch of white pins. There's obviously some sort of racial alley. symbolic metaphor. Our bo- going on we have there. like neon color bowling balls at our bowling alley. Oh, you go to one of those yeah. dark light ones? That's cool. They those are, are bo- yeah. the bowling balls look like actually pin, uh, pool balls, which is really cool. So, like big pool oh. balls. Oh, hmm. okay. But yeah, I just, uh, I would feel if I was in Ian's shoes and I was you know, in Los Angeles looking at other races and thinking to myself, oh, these people are are cannon fodder in a war between whites. It's how do you, how, like, what a belittling way to imagine other people's lives. Right? Mm-hmm. Right. You're at the movie theater. I mean, I just, I don't... Like they're live, it seems as though they're living the same kind of lives that we're living. That's because you're blinded by white privilege. Okay, you don't understand. Listen, if you, if you were to put on the the they live sunglasses that the that the non white people are constantly wearing, you'd see that around every corner is a, a Richard Spencer, look, a I, KKK person with a hood, just holding a, a rope, waiting to hang Jesse Smollett. I, I yeah, no. <laughs> in MAGA country. <laughs> See, but that's the world that Ian Dance can seize. And I just, I that's... wonder where he lives in the country that he can see this world because, like, I, I feel like if if we talked to Ian Dance and I said, listen, you you make an argument that, like, black, pe- black and brown people are oppressed, right? Mm-hmm. Does that mean they don't have money to go bowling? <laughs> like, to go to the movies or... I mean, does what does this oppression consists of? Right. Because I mean, I that just doesn't match up with the reality of the situation. Like you would think in Ian Danskin's world that it would only be white people at the bowling alley because they're the only ones that can afford to bowl or want to bowl even. Right. I just I don't see that world. That's because that, you're racist. Okay. <laughs> well. I see the opposite. I see Ian Danskin as being the racist one. Can you imagine? No, you're racist. Can you imagine like walking up to them and being, oh, I'm so glad to see her at the bowling alley. <laughs> it's like, I thought black people were too oppressed to bowl. If, mm-hmm. As soon as you're having that conversation, you're the racist, okay? You are the racist. <laughs> Could you imagine going up to like a black family and being like, but they're like bowling and you go up to them and you're like, I'm so sorry. And they're like, excuse me? They're like, I'm just so sorry for all the things white people have done to you. They're like, oh, that's great. Can you get away from my children, please? I know. That's exactly what would happen. They go, can, can, I, can I buy you a free game? Please they, let me buy you a, a, a free bowling game. Please. They would be so offended I by know. that. And rightfully so they yeah. would. <laughs> like, what like, the well, fuck? You're basically a racist piece of shit, but the Ian Danskins of the world can sit around and make YouTube videos that basically parrots this exact narrative. Mm -hmm. And somehow they're not racist pieces of shit. 